I've created lots and lots of SOPs for different things so I can start delegating more of the work I was doing all myself. I'm trying to free up my time so I can spend more time focused on content creation and doing the things that I really love to do versus the things I have to do. It doesn't matter about the vanity metrics. You just got to focus on creating the absolute best possible content that you can. This is the most important piece. If you're creating content on YouTube, it's going to take time. This is not, I'm going to go out, create this really amazing piece of content. I'm going to post it. I'm going to be Insta famous. This is going to be life changing for me. It just doesn't work like that on YouTube. Nothing has improved my communication skills like YouTube. Nothing. Slowing myself down, pausing. YouTube has helped me perfect that. First, I just want to give a quick introduction. I am a social impact entrepreneur. And as I said in the chat from Sacramento, California, I love creating content. For the longest time, I thought I was just a graphic designer. As my career evolved over the last 18 years, I realized that I was so much more than that. I started as a graphic designer, but I learned SEO. I learned paid advertising. I learned Facebook ads. I learned copywriting. I learned rank and rent websites. There's so many different skills I've been able to stack for the last 18 years of my career. And one thing I want to leave you guys with by the end of this today is being able to understand that you get paid in proximity to the size of the problems that you solve. I want to start off by saying that is we get paid based on the skill sets that we have and the experiences that we have. Now, I had a mentor. His name was Dighton Bradford back in 2011, 2012. And I had a good knack for marketing, but I brought him one of my brochures said, hey, Dighton, what do you think of this brochure that I designed? He's like, you have a really good knack for marketing. You're an amazing designer, probably the best I've ever seen, but you don't understand understand the fundamental science of marketing, which is logical, ethical, and emotional, and understanding what drives human beings, which is vanity, greed, and love. So once I was able to understand those foundational principles and start implementing them into my clients' businesses, I started seeing significantly better results. Like I was already getting results from my clients. This is where I saw the big disconnect for so many businesses. They don't actually have a marketing strategy or a real marketing plan. I can't even tell you how many times I did that in the first decade of my career. But once I understood that having a marketing plan would be a game changer for me. Every single client that I come up to now, whether I'm meeting them for the first time or I've been working with them for years, previous to me doing marketing planning, I've asked them, hey, show me your marketing plan. And 99 out of 100, more like 999 out of 1,000 have all said, no, I don't have one. So I was able to develop some stuff here that we're going to talk about today around marketing planning that's going to really help you take your story, your niche, and your identity and use that as a foundational piece for your marketing plan. Marketing is actually very simple. People try to make it all complicated and sound tricky and funnels and and all these fancy things when the reality is there's only three simple things that motivate people. And if you understand those and you understand what's driving people, whether it's health, wealth, relationships, right? Their vanity, their greed. If you understand that stuff, it's going to really help you streamline your marketing process for yourself or for your businesses. So I was about three years into my journey, two and a half, three years into my journey on YouTube. I'm starting to get burnt out on you. Like, when is this thing going to actually start paying off? I've been posting three times, two times a week consistently for the last two and a half years. When is this thing going to really like launch my career to this next step? And it was about six months later, the company Digital Marketer approached me. In fact, the president of Digital Marketer approached me and said, hey, man, I love your content. We should do something together. And I was like, who is this guy? So I clicked on his profile. And sure enough, it was the president of digitalmarketer.com. And I was like, wow, I'd love to work with you. What did you have in mind? And he's like, I think we should do a podcast together. That one connection was a huge catapult for my career to get myself in front of the industry leaders and the titans that are kind of sitting at the table controlling our industry. And so what I learned back in 2017, when I first started my speaking career from my mentor, James Malinchak, you have to pay to put yourself into proximity with other people. So I spent roughly around 80 to $100,000 to build my YouTube following up into that point. And I had seen very little ROI in return, but I just knew deep down in my gut that it was going to pay off. One thing I discovered when you go into something with an open mind and you're always a student, you can learn so much more than being like, well, I've been doing content marketing for the last 15 years and I understand the science of marketing and I understand all the fundamentals. The content marketing framework that Mark DeGrasse created was very, very simple. It started with your content series. So this is the content series. Your content series for me as a video guy, I'm doing YouTube content. And within that, I could say YouTube shorts as pillar one, long form videos, or I could even change it. I can go educational content, entertainment content, and evergreen content, right? Those can be my three pillars. And then below that, you're going to have your supporting pieces. So these supporting pieces could be like, let's just use this as an example as evergreen content for pillar three here. I could say how to do geofencing, how to do pay-per-click advertising. If I'm doing educational content here under pillar two, it could be like how to rank your website on the first page of Google in the next 30 days. So I just want to give you guys this piece of advice. If you're creating content on YouTube, it's going to take time. This is not, I'm going to go out, create this really amazing piece of content. I'm going to post it. And then the next 24 hours, it's going to go viral. Or the next week, it's going to go viral. And I'm going to be Insta famous. This is going to be life changing for me. It just doesn't work like that on YouTube. So let me just show you my YouTube. And it's not the most extraordinary YouTube channel. Haven't even hit 20,000 officially yet on this channel, but I made 7,000 
thousand dollars in AdSense, and I've had 1.3 million views from just my long form content. This is all long form content, zero ads. This has been 100% organic. And as you can see here, I really started kicking this thing off in 2020. So the power of the YouTube that's really been impactful for me is I've landed speaking gigs. Speaking gigs has been huge for me on YouTube. People have seen my progression from when I started doing YouTube back in 2020. If you watch some of my first videos to today, the other thing that I was able to do is brand deals. I have had countless brand deals from company called Engage AI, Ben Q, building authority. If you look here, these are real numbers. This is what I've been able to charge thanks to you. YouTube. This has actually went up recently. There's no way I would ever be able to in a million years charge that if it wasn't for the authority that I've built that I've attracted because of YouTube. There's no greater opportunity than YouTube. And you're going to hear me say that a lot. The next thing is building community. I have built a Facebook group of over a thousand members, web designers, graphic designers, motion designers, because that's the community that I built on YouTube. And a lot of the content that I've created is around those three industries. And I built an amazing community, lifelong friendships, driving the best leads. This is a great example. So I have this email email that came in with a guy who saw my mid journey video and loved it and said, Hey, I want to hire you to help me with mid journey for my furniture design business. Are you able to do consultations? And I said, absolutely. Here's my link. I sent him a Calendly link, which I've now switched over to tidy Cal. I've sent him a Calendly link for $2,500 and he paid it. No sales call. No two call close, one call close. He paid the invoice. When I consider YouTube leads, they are dream clients. You've already built a relationship with them. They've already been educated. They already know where you're at. He probably had already done his research on what my rates were. So he wasn't surprised when I sent him 2,500 bucks to give him four sessions for the month, right? He just signed right up. So I've been calling them enrollment calls. And then the last thing is communication mastery. Nothing has improved my communication skills like YouTube. Nothing. Slowing myself down, pausing. What do I do with my hands, right? All these different things that we don't think about or that we stress about when we're speaking. YouTube has helped me perfect that. Those are just a few of the perks. Just to go through this real quick, power video marketing. I've had over 10 speaking gigs from YouTube. I landed opportunities at Google, Digital Marketer, Lamar Advertising. I've had over 20 podcast interviews that have come directly from YouTube. Power video marketing, 50 brand deal offers from YouTube. I've gone from charging $100 an hour to charging $1,000 an hour. That's a 10x increase. Over a thousand members to my Facebook community, as I mentioned, it's called Instagraphics. And then over over 100 plus leads. What's funny about this, I'm going to show you guys this real fast. I've seen people that have less than a thousand subscribers that are making seven figures off their YouTube channel. No joke. It doesn't matter about the vanity metrics. You just got to focus on creating the absolute best possible content that you can. This is the most important piece. If you are creating content on YouTube, you have to understand your customer avatar. And this is a before phase and an after phase. So all of this that you see here is what you're going to use for your content strategy. These are the pains that your people are feeling. This is going to help you start with your hooks. Hey, are you feeling lonely, always running behind? This gives you everything that you need to create better social content. So do you want to define your core objectives? Do you want to start with clear goals, whether it's brand awareness, lead generation, or customer engagement? And then here's the types of videos that you can create that's going to help you simplify this process. You're like, man, I want to create content. I just don't even know where to start or what to create. Those are the things that I would focus on. As you can see here, I gave some examples, evergreen content, trending content. So there's some keyword research tools you can do if you go to trends.google.com, you can just type a keyword in, right? So you type in mid journey and you can see here, look at the search volume for mid journey. It's actually starting to trend downward. All kinds of topics. How much is mid journey? I could make a video on that. That would be an evergreen piece of content that also would be kind of trending, right? It's up 200% engagement content. So this is a good one. Seven gadgets every graphic designer needs. This video at this time, whatever I posted this had 242,000. I think it has a lot more than that, but it's got thousands of comments. And then you have shareable content, obviously short are very, very shareable. The people who are watching long form content are a lot more invested. The intent is much higher. They're going to be interested in getting to know you more, getting interested in your communities, products, your services, and then repurposing content. I take all of my videos and I repurpose them. I was able to turn that into shorts. I've been able to use that content in my email marketing. I've been able to use some of those videos performed way better than any of my typical ad type videos of like trying to get them into my funnel, just educating the marketplace. One of my mentors, Qasem Aslam says, the person that pays the most or invests the most into educating the marketplace is going to win. Lead magnets. I've created a lot of different PDFs and guides and stuff that I've used to create lead magnets to lead them back to my email list and then social media graphics. So I do this thing every single day. I've done 365 business minutes. So I start every single business minute with a quote. Then I talk about the problem and then I give three tips of advice 
with some form of action for them to sign up for my newsletter and get a free book. I had somebody on my team take my business minutes, put them into a Google document. I can load that up onto my teleprompter and read one business minute after next. Again, education-based content. There's nothing more powerful than that. One of the other pieces, and I mentioned this at the beginning, is your brand identity, right? Ensure your videos consistently reflect your brand's voice, style, and values. Who are you? Are you a mom? Are you a social impact entrepreneur? Knowing who you are, but going even deeper than that. That's just the first layer. We got to peel back that onion. Why the you is important. Great brands have high consumer awareness. They create strong brand loyalty. They build trust and they're less susceptible to price comparison, right? Here's a little golden thing that I created this graphic. I didn't create this process or this framework. This is actually created by Carl Jung. Now the creator is who I am. It's my personality type. It's what I love to do. It's what I was created for, but we all have our own communication style. So what I've created is a primary archetype and a secondary archetype. The way that I communicate online because of my life, because of my childhood, I went to 12 schools growing up, homeless at 10, homeless at 16. Like I have always been the rebel. So the way that I communicate online with all of my content is always in the character of the rebel. I'm a creator that is very rebellious. If everybody's saying going right, I'm going left. Everybody has a primary and then everybody has a secondary. How do you communicate? And here are some examples. So this is really, really important. So I want you to pick your primary and pick your secondary brand archetypes. You're going to want to engage the senses. There are five ways to experience a brand. A lot of people don't think about this. Brand is not your logo. The five senses are sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste. All these different things are very important to your brand and your approach. What are your business cards look like? Did you get cheap business cards for Vista Print? Or did you spend the extra money to go to a high quality print shop and get the gold foil or the painted edges. I took the extra time as a creator and as that rebel to do something different than everybody else does. And I had all this information I put together. I was like, how do I actually make this connect and create the narrative for every single person? And that's where Donald Miller's framework of the SB7 framework came into play. You have a character, which is your client, it's not you, and they have a problem. They're underpaid, they're unhealthy, and they meet the guy. You are the guy. They are the main character in their story. And you give them a plan and you're gonna call them to action. And that action is going to either result in success or failure. As you know, we're going to learn a lot more from failure than we are from success. Either one of these is a good thing, right? You're going to fail forward. You're going to continue to move forward. If it's failure, then what did you learn from it? The next piece to this is part of your brand is your story, your niche, and your identity. And it literally goes in that, in that method. So I want to show you something that I made. Now, this has not been released to the public yet. So you guys are getting a sneak peek before anybody. <laughs> Greetings, I am Banks at your dedicated service as your brand butler. I am here to guide you on your journey towards brand growth. Please choose one of the options below to begin. The two tools on the left are to assist you with planning and the two options on the right will show you how I can manage your growth for you. At any time, press the middle option to get live support. So what I did when AI really took hold and everybody was using ChatGPT, I was like, I gotta capitalize on this ASAP. I created a digital twin of myself. I took all of my consultations I've ever done, my VIP days, everything, and I downloaded the recordings from every single one. Then I took the transcripts from every single one of those, put those into AI and said, what are the common 21 questions that I ask in every consultation? And I found the patterns. If I want to create a new blueprint. I've created this thing called the branding blueprint. And all you do is you answer these 22 questions that I need to know your brand name and you go through the process and you answer all these questions. And when it's done, it populates a branding blueprint. And then it walks you through your story, right? Why did you start your business? It walks you through your niche. So who do you want to help most? What is your brand personality? What is your brand's mission and what are your top core values? The deeper you're willing to go on my questionnaire form there that you see in those 22 questions, the better result you're going to get at the end. And then at the end, it creates you a brand persona. And one thing that my team and I just did is we actually have fonts or working on a logo feature too. So it's even going to pop out a new logo for him. It's going to give him his fonts his brand colors and everything. And then it creates this brand image. If his brand was a person, what would it look like? So I've developed this whole digital twin of myself to create your brand strategy, to create your marketing plan. This is going to walk you through the story niche and identity process. And just to kind of show you when I do this in person with clients, I go very deep. So there's the color psychology, there's understanding their blueprint. Here's the actual original blueprint that I created. This is my framework that I developed, story, niche, and identity. And so in the beginning of your career, when you don't have a ton of money, you have to trade your time for money, right? And so you have to do a lot of this work yourself. And so organically, you're going to have to be using opus.pro to make your shorts. That's what I use for my shorts. Metricool, M-E-T-R-I-C-O-O-L, to do your social media management and to post across all those 
those platforms and it's going to show you what time throughout the week you should be posting, especially as you get more content and you start posting more consistently, you start scheduling your stuff out. You're going to have to do a lot of this stuff yourself, but eventually you can use AI to start creating SOPs and start delegating. I have started making my own GPTs, which are going to be my lead magnets, viral video creator, video outline creator, and I have my daily brand builder. I took my business minute concept. There is an SOP creator GPT. I'll show you real fast. It's called SOP Builder, Standard Operating Procedures. You can see here, I created one for this one here. I fed it all the information, so I gave it the data set. Studio Assistant and Community Manager. Okay, I have another one here for creating video outlines. I've created lots and lots of SOPs for different things so I can start delegating more of the work I was doing all myself. I'm trying to free up my time so I can spend more time focused on content creation and doing the things that I really love to do versus the things I have to do. I mean, my productivity with AI has literally, I originally said 10X, it's realistically more like 100X. What I am able to accomplish in a week now, especially since I have team members and other people, would, would take me 90 days I can do in a day. It's absolutely insane. Thank you so much, man, for coming on. I appreciate it. I hope you all found value in this and just gleaned some new ideas. All right, love Beautiful. it, man. Thank you so much for coming on here. I do appreciate Thank your you. time, your energy, and your effort. So have a great night, brother. Thank you, everyone. Came here to fill the void. I am love. I am peace. I am joy. That can never be destroyed. I am love. I am peace. I am joy.